Welcome back. Talking with Mike Murnane and I uh, want to talk about some of the movies he's worked on and some of the films uh, that he's been involved with. So let's start off with this, this ABC. Uh, it was a kid's program. It was like, for lack of a better term, like claymation called Bump in the Night. Yeah. What was your involvement in that? Well, I got hired on to help with sculpture. I was uh, made some contacts in the Bay Area. I had moved up from Long Beach and made some contacts that ended up, hey, you want to come sculpt on the show? Sure, I'll try it out. And it was just starting in a little, uh, the art director's studio with maybe five people. And then we moved into a huge studio that was going to later have like 25 stages. Whoa. And, and I, you know, I was super green. I had sculpted a lot, so I knew I was pretty up and running with sculpture and a lot of little techniques, but this show just, you know, opened you up to what stop motion is and all the people. And let me, real quick, yeah. no pun intended, but let me stop you there for a second. Stop motion. So is that where you actually, you like slightly move it and then shoot it and then slightly move it and yeah. shoot it? So that, you, re okay. Yeah, okay. and claymation is the same thing. It's just done with clay. And you know, like the actual puppet's made out of clay and you move it and then you kind of clean it up, move it again, clean it up, take a shot. And if, if you make it out of foam, like actually mold or take the sculpt, make a mold, put an armature in it, you know, like a metal skeleton, then cast foam around it, then you have that same character, you paint it up, and now when you move it, you don't have to re-sculpt it every time because it's actually made oh, of yeah. like a silicone foray it, or a foam. And is that how Bump in the Night was? Most of it, yeah. We did okay. some claymation, like I do in-betweens of a, you know, a, a character had to suddenly go ring and, and spin around and disappear. And so you'd have the character, you'd match a color of clay to it and then do like about six in-betweens of it shrinking. And then the animator would actually animate it and, and sculpt away and do the in-betweens. That's fascinating. Oh, it was super fun. And I was learning like crazy and meeting, you know, a ton of best friends that had just gotten out of college and people from Nightmare Before Christmas, a big stop motion Tim Burton movie, mm -hmm. Henry Selleck, like all these big stop-mo people were coming over and, and every day, I mean, even now working in stop-mo, you just walk by someone's desk and just like, what is that? One thing learned today, what's that? Two things, like you, there's, everybody's super multi-talented and, and I was just becoming multi-talented. Like I was like, hey, I like that, I like that. You know, you're always doing model making and you know, you gotta learn mold making and some armature in the wood shop and the metal shop and the stage and how characters animate. So all these workings of the character become the big collaboration for your sculpture. You know, I might just do the clay part, but I have to talk to 20 people to get it all to sing. And Did you enjoy that, that process? Oh, I love it. The collaboration? Totally love it. Yeah. I mean, the fine art side, you, you, know, you can get sick of it and you just want to go do your own thing without anybody else's voices. And you do that. That's called fine art, you know, and on these jobs, it's not a fine art job. Right, very Unless maybe if you're the creator, but even the creator, you have, to, it's all about compromise, right? Like the collaborative nature of it is you have to have that done by Friday. So yes, you'd love to work forever on it like they did in the master days or something, but you got to get that done. And the, and the speed, you know, that, that since I like the conceptual stuff where it's really just burn out ideas and get ideas out of the ether and into our world, like the faster the better sometimes. And production is always about that, so it's kind of lucky that I love, I love yeah. getting lost in the speed of it all. And, uh, and it was just fun to create a character a week. You know, I'm learning tons every week, you know, the, the collaborative piece of just like, you get locked and you're just like, oh geez, I don't even know how to do this. Oh yeah, you just do this, 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 and boom, you're, you're going. Going again. What are some of the projects you worked at at ILM? Uh, worked on a bunch of little commercials, Galaxy Quest, that movie, Space Cowboys. I did a little, little guy inside a fighter jet or inside of a, you know, Chuck Yeager testing the sound barrier. It was like that piece of the story. Mm. Uh, they, they were making a Frankenstein movie that was a, going to be ILM's first in-house movie that kind of got, never quite made it. Turned into Val Van Helsing, which I didn't work uh -huh. on. But like a lot of the design kind of gets reformatted into other movies, maybe. And then, the, and then episode one was I worked a little on that, doing like swamp tree roots, helping just you know big groups of collaboration and and character sculpture, either character sculpture, some model making, 
you know, one character might be a monster with this weird little robot arm. So you go up into, you know, I, the model shop at that time had a huge, it was like walking into a model store and that's their storehouse. And you just walk in and just go, mm -hmm, and pick out whatever you want. You know, you might have a drawing and just like, oh, that shape matches. I'll take that. That's like got to be so cool. Oh, it's, you know, living the dream that you, yeah. you had of working on Star Wars. I grew up in the Bay Area where ILM was, so I kind of had it on my radar. And when I moved back up, I, you know, worked a contact to check in there, and the head of sculpture ended up going to Long Beach State, and so did all the, or two of the other main guys that worked on original Star Wars. I think that helped a little. Yeah. You know, and I was obsessed, you know, that helps. Yeah, you, yeah. If you, you don't get in that room, really, unless you're kind of obsessed with it, because it's way too much work. You know, this work is, a, it's a lot of work, animation and effects, it's, it's too much. Right. Movies shouldn't be able to be done, because they just seem impossible, but everybody wants it. Right, right. And it just happens, and then you come back and do it again. And uh, the model shop was filled with people, you know, and even Bump in the Night, my sister came by and visited one day and was just kind of like, you know, she'd met everybody and she's like, these are all people like you. These are people like you. Because I was kind of a weird artist kid in my family. And they're all pretty artistic, I think, but I was like the super obsessed and maybe a little off kilter. Uh -huh. And these are all, you know, all my references of that Ultraman and monsters and comic books and all this stuff. It was everybody. Just, everybody got, oh yeah, you could riff on anything. They were like, yeah, yeah, that was episode two. Remember when? Uh, uh. So, you know, your nerd heart starts to pulse. Absolutely. And you get all excited. Well, you mentioned Star Wars a few times, and so I know you've probably discussed this topic to death, but I'm not letting you out of here without talking Let's about it a it. little bit. So when we come back from the break, we're going to discuss Star Wars. So you guys stick with us. We'll be right back.